Look at these two vans. They look almost identical, don't they? Straight from the production line. Good, but nothing special. But wait, listen for a moment. Yes, this is one of a new breed of traffic compatible electric vehicles being built on major manufacturers' production lines that are part of the electric revolution. Until recently, electric vehicles have had limited performance, though this hasn't stopped them developing a special market based on sound economics. But the latest technical developments mean that they can now compete with petrol and diesel vehicles in a variety of common fleet applications. Let's take a look at five examples at work with major operators. This Sherpa is in use with the post office and operates in the heart of Birmingham. It has a range of up to 50 miles and a top speed of 50 miles per hour. Delivering parcels for White Arrow, this Bedford operates in a typically suburban environment and has a similar load, range and top speed. Also used for deliveries, but of a larger kind, such as furniture and white goods, this Majestic, owned by Leicester Co-op, has a range of 40 miles and a top speed of 35 miles per hour. In the larger range, we have this bus version of the Dodge 50 series. It can do up to 40 miles per hour and has a range of 45 miles. It is in use here in Richmond, ferrying senior citizens to and from their day centre. The street cleansing department of the West Midlands County Council is using this tipper version of the Leyland Terrier, which has a similar performance to the Dodge. So, let's see just how well these vehicles perform in a variety of jobs typical of those undertaken by fleet vehicles in any working day. On a cold, damp morning in Wolverhampton, we see one advantage electric vehicles bring. No starting problems. Just unplug the charger and off you go. How about that for acceleration? And after all, that's often what counts in an urban situation. The ability to slip out into a gap in moving traffic with no fuss and bother. Or to get across a busy circle like our tipper on its way to the first destination of the morning. Birmingham's traffic is pretty horrendous all of the time, but in the 0 to 30 bracket, the acceleration of electric vehicles is as good as, and in some cases even better, than similar internal combustion engine vehicles. And with no gears to crash or engine to stall, the response is immediate. With a top speed of 50 miles per hour, the one-ton vans can hold their own on urban highways too. Some stern critics query the range between battery charges. But most vans of this type are used for deliveries or service applications involving a surprisingly low daily mileage. In fact, as every transport manager knows, a large proportion do under 50 miles a day, well within the range of these new vehicles. 
An interesting new idea in transport routing is in operation here at Southern Electricity, where a low loader brings two fully packed box bodies to a subsidiary depot every morning, taking the empties back on the return trip. The loaded bodies are then put on electric Dodge chassis for the actual delivery rounds. This both increases effective range and reduces operating costs. Of course, cost is the main concern of every manager considering fleet replacements. But when we discuss costs, we shouldn't just look at the original purchase price of a vehicle, but the costs of running it too. Here, we compare the whole life costs per mile of two one-ton vehicles, petrol and electric. First, we have the purchase price of the vehicles. We add to this the cost of propelling them. The cost of propelling the electric vehicles includes the cost of the batteries, which can be regarded as fuel bought forward. Or batteries can be leased, whichever is most favourable financially. We've also included the cost of a charger, which in fact may not need to be replaced every time the vehicle is changed. When we add on the maintenance costs, which are considerably more for internal combustion engines, it can be seen that electric vehicles compare very favourably. And unlike electric vehicles, internal combustion vehicles are subjected to other running costs, such as vehicle excise duty. So, when we look at the overall picture, electric vehicles can, in many applications, operate at lower overall cost than their internal combustion engine equivalents. As we saw, the maintenance of internal combustion engine vehicles was a big factor in their cost. Now, imagine how much easier it would be to maintain a vehicle that had no distributor or coil, no starter motor, no air filter or oil filter, no carburetor or petrol pump, no gearbox, clutch or cooling system or exhaust system, needing no engine oil or spark plugs, not even having pistons or valves. What are you left with? Well, you could say, an electric motor. And it's not just a reduction in routine maintenance. Many fewer moving parts mean fewer spares. Electric vehicles, as we saw, don't have starter motors. So that's a major item delivery fleet managers needn't worry about. Replacement clutches and gearboxes have become such a problem for inner city operators that they've switched to automatics and hang the expense. For all intents and purposes, electric vehicles are automatic. The elimination of added vibration due to reciprocal moving parts reduces general wear and tear, giving a longer working life. With the added reliability of electric vehicles, this also means less capital tied up in standby vehicles, so further cost advantages. Routine service of electric vehicles does require that batteries are topped up every two or three weeks, but perhaps this is more correctly equated with filling the fuel tank. Apart from that, an annual check on the brushes is all that is required. Now let's go back to our drivers to see the benefit electric vehicles bring to them. In today's modern jargon, electric vehicles are user-friendly. This Leyland Terrier even has power steering. They have a simple two-pedal control system similar to an automatic, which responds instantly and precisely. Forward and reverse are selected at the push of a button or on a simple lever like a gear stick. Regenerative braking means far less brake wear. Brakes function at a lower temperature and therefore more efficiently, however bad the conditions. The lack of engine fumes means greater comfort for passengers. Together with a low noise level, this also can reduce driver fatigue, an important safety factor.
Similarly, it can mean that even at the end of a busy day, drivers can be more patient and in a better frame of mind to deal with members of the public and tackle any tricky technical problems. Finally, all models have the usual facilities of today's modern cabs, like comfortable seating. This can mean a long day doesn't seem quite so long. These then are the new modern breed of electric vehicles. With their high performance, their low operating costs, and their longer working life. So, when you're considering replacements for your fleet, you don't just have a choice between diesel or petrol, there's a credible alternative, the new traffic compatible electric vehicles. So, why not join the electric revolution? Very nice.